No, the, the name of the study is, uh, let's see, Flesh and Bones. Uh, we, we picked up on it. Uh, I, I began talking about it last week. And one verse in particular, let me see if I can... Um, in Luke chapter 24, verse 39, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. Now, I was the reason I was interested in this particular verse, I mentioned that I was listening to uh, another Bible teacher, that they try to use this verse as proof that Christ, uh, the reason he didn't have a spiritual body after the resurrection is because this is a demonstration. Um, so he's going to the cross and now he still has a flesh, uh, a body of flesh and bones. Uh, and this means that it's it, he was following up on the substance rather than this being the substance itself. So I want to talk a little bit about that tonight and in our comments uh, a little bit later about the about this particular topic and see how it is altogether the contrary, I think that Christ now is uh, is identified with the body flesh and blood or flesh and bones all right so in first John chapter 1 verse 1 that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon in our hands have handled of the word of life now the setting is after the resurrection uh, I believe he was on earth 40 days and 40 nights before returning to heaven. So he was still walking around in a fleshly body. All right. So they handle, he said, uh, handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bone. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, I'm sorry, flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. So, what I want to try to share is how Christ is altogether identified with flesh and blood or flesh and bones. He is a part of the body. And flesh and bones, by the way, is talking about Babylon, ultimately. It is looking at the church, the corporate body, the body of Christ, whether saved or unsaved. Right? God is concerned about the whole body the corporate church so the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil so in other words the Christ being able to identify with the with the church with sinful man that provided salvation that gave way for the redemption of the body if he hadn't been identified if he hadn't if he hadn't taken on a human nature and this I think um, is going to refute what I was saying just now this idea that somehow Christ had a human body before the foundation of the world before the world began that's that's not really possible because if there's no creation how can a human body uh, be able to sustain itself and an eternity pass. I don't think a human body, at least not according to the Bible, a human body is, uh, is going to be able to survive uh, an eternity pass. But we'll talk a little more about that later. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 23, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 30 For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Donna, hi, welcome. We are members of his body, right? So the body of Christ, the flesh and bone. Now keep in mind that this is a uh, parabolic uh, statement. We're looking at when we talk about flesh and bones, we're looking, we're talking about a person. And that person, collectively, I believe, it is the church, the body of Christ. That makes sense? 
So that's the body of Christ that uh, that is in view here, I believe. We are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So you can begin to see um, we can begin to see that this body we can see how Luke chapter 24 verse 39 for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have okay so in other words Christ is flesh of the flesh or bone of the bone of the body it is one body uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 3 for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh so again Christ had to take on a human nature right he had to take on a human nature in order to redeem the body 2nd Samuel chapter 5 verse 1 then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spake now remember David who is David a, a picture of David is a type of a type of Christ yes correct David is a type of Christ so they came to David unto Hebron and spake saying behold we are thy bone and thy flesh so we see again the, the, the relationship between Christ and his body. So it is one body made up of bones, made up of flesh, made up of blood. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor, that is deliver them that are tempted. Hebrews 4 verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are. So you see again, I think it's very important, Lord willing, that we understand that it was important for Christ to take on a human nature in creation itself in order to provide salvation, right? So, to me, it is impossible when someone talks about the cross being a demonstration and that Christ already had some kind of a body prior to God creating the earth, the heavens and the earth. This means that somehow that human body would have had to have been uh, qualified to live and in, uh, in, in the environment of eternity and, and I don't think we have any uh, indication from the Bible how that could be possible right I don't see how that could be possible alright uh, but on the spiritual side we're looking at one body he himself have suffered being tempted he is able to succor them that are tempted we have not in high priest verse 15 Hebrews 4 which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are. And that's another reason why I offer the church coming into the great tribulation is a temptation for the body of Christ. Everything that Christ did physically uh, was pointing spiritually to what the collective body would have to go through during the tribulation through the tribulation to the judgment that comes on Babylon. Philippians chapter 2 verse 7, But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. You see that? <clears throat> I mean, there's just so much information in the Bible showing how it was possible or it was necessary that Christ take on a human nature. He had to become like us in order to redeem the body. Philippians chapter 2 verse 8, And being found in fashion as a man, there it is again, underline that, as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Okay, any questions about that? <clears throat> 
Any questions about? Um, we're looking at the 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 collective body, the body of Christ. Now, the target verse, as I mentioned, is Luke 24, verse 39. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself handle me, and see, for a spirit hath not, have not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. All right, now, uh, flesh and bones is also talking about Babylon, right? Is also talking about Babylon. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Now, I'm not sure. I, I think in this verse, it's possible that flesh and blood might be pointing to Christ here. Because God is making a distinction between principalities, uh, powers, darkness of this world. But he also talks about flesh and blood as being Babylon itself. Right? as being Babylon itself. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality. So that, that's something we'll probably have to come back to. But Matthew chapter 16, verse 17, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee. You see the difference? So there is a flesh and blood. First of all, we're looking at the corporate body as the body of Christ. Flesh um, of his flesh, bone of his bone. But there is also flesh and blood that becomes Babylon. That is a part of the unsaved body. The so flesh and blood that is Babylon have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father. See the distinction? My Father which is in heaven. Now this I say, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 50. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So who is the flesh and blood that is in view there? Who is the flesh and blood that's in view there? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Right. Hold on one second. Uh, yeah, so Babylon. Correct, Eric. Flesh and blood, that's Babylon, right? So now we have, uh, if you're looking at flesh and blood, we can look at it from the vantage point of judgment, and that's Babylon. And, and that again, that, that's, not, that's nothing new, because that's the thread we see throughout the whole Bible. We have flesh and blood, that is the unsaved or the collective body, and now we, and, and, and that body identifies, it is a human body. So in other words, Christ had to be identified with Babylon. Does that make sense? Christ had to be, and, and that's, that's not surprising when we, when we talk about the, the, the body of Christ. You and I, by God's grace, we too, we were a part of Babylon. We were in the, uh, in, in, in the heart of the earth. That's where Christ found his body. So he had to be identified. He had to take on a human nature. He had to become flesh. And because of that, I think the language again uh, in Luke chapter 24 verse 39, uh, flesh and bones. And as we read, uh, the children are partakers of flesh and bone. That was necessary in order for Christ now to be resurrected. Just like it would have been necessary. It's, it's an integral part of the salvation process. That the believers go through the great tribulation. Can you see why? Again, uh, it, it does make sense. When God commands the body to go to Babylon. Even historically. That they had to become captives in Babylon. And that's where God would redeem them. So the, the church itself, likewise, the believers, they had to become a part. They had to, be, uh, uh, they had to go to Babylon where Christ was buried, where he was crucified. And because of this now, he is able to bring, he is able to redeem the body. A very interesting connection, I think. Um, Galatians chapter 1, verse 16. 
Well, actually, did I read uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 15? Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So there's a flesh and blood that is Babylon. That Babylon cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So there is a separation. But nevertheless, that flesh and blood was where Christ was that made it possible for the elect now to come out of Babylon. Galatians 1.16 To reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. So very interesting uh, concept there. Again, there is a flesh and blood that is the body of Christ and then there is a separation. Once Christ was identified corporately with the body, he went to the cross, uh, he took upon himself a human nature, now, even after his resurrection, he is still flesh and blood. Because, even from the very beginning, you read in the book of Genesis, Adam said, this is not bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And Ephesians 5 says, we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So there is that, 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 that sacrifice that brings about the redemption of the body. That Christ had to be flesh and bones. He had to identify with, uh, with Babylon. And by doing that, he was able to, uh, he was resurrected. Um, and that is uh, pointing to the redemption of the church, of the body. All right, uh, very short study. Let me uh, let, let me just read. I'm not posting this. Well, actually, let me. I can. Uh, I think I can post it on the computer here. I'm just gonna post the. Um, if I can find. Let's see. There it is. Berean studies. So flesh and blood seems to be pointing to the unsaved church that is Babylon. Christ became a part of the sinful body in order to redeem it. After his resurrection, he continued with a human nature as proof he had saved the body. All right, so very short uh, study, but again, uh, the, the, the point to consider is the idea is how Christ is intimately identified with the, uh, the corporate body. Flesh of my flesh, bone of my bones. All right, hang on one second.